Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. Happy 2024 and welcome to a grand new year. This is the first Saturday to kick off an incredible 12 months. Welcome to America's Favorite Pharmacist brought to you by Triquercha Health. We're chatting with my amazing co-host, pharmaceutical expert and contributor, Phil Cowley, joined by my dear friend, actress Mackenzie Westmore and founder of Westmore Beauty. Today we're chatting about the increased use of semi-glutide and is it safe for children, the side effects you must be aware of, and the risks you may not know about. Semi-glutide is a medication that has taken the world by storm with its remarkable close to 20% weight loss in just six months. It belongs to a class of medications known as glucagon-like peptide 1, what they call GLP-1 receptor agonists. It mimics the GLP-1 hormone that is released in the gastrointestinal tract in response to eating. One role of GLP-1 is to prompt the body to produce more insulin, which reduces blood glucose, what we call sugar. Now, Phil and I are going to highlight its diverse applications from reducing cardiovascular risk to aiding in weight loss and controlling glucose levels. The conversation will then shift to Mackenzie, a veteran in the beauty industry, and her perspective on the widespread use of semi-glutide in Hollywood among non-diabetic patients. And finally, I'm going to provide insights into the challenges and risks, potential pitfalls, particularly addressing the concerning rise of semi-glutide use among non-diabetic teenagers. Welcoming now to the show are my experts at hand, Phil Cowley and Mackenzie Westmore. Welcome to the show, superstars. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Phil, take it away, my darling. So nobody's going to argue that the world has changed because of Ozempic and, and Terpazotide. I mean, you're seeing people drop weight left and right. We're seeing all sorts of celebrities going on it, and they're being very open. And this has been fantastic for all of us. But now I'm new to the game, but the two of you have been in the beauty industry forever. I mean, you're both gorgeous people who've worked really hard at it for years and years. But I see these GLP-1 medications and I start to wonder what are the long-term effects? I mean, if you start looking back in history, we used things like Adderall for weight loss. Fenfen was a colossal bust after everybody started having heart attacks. So here we are, 17% weight loss, six months, you're seeing 12% reduction of, of your cardiovascular risk. You're even seeing planes buying less jet fuel because of this. But Mackenzie, you've gone through this beauty industry for so long. I'm kind of curious what your gut feeling is. Where does this end up and how does this fit in? Um, first of all, it's so great to be here. You know, as I said earlier, huge fan, Phil. Then you know I love you to death. <laughs> uh, when it first hit the scene, I was very angry because I was seeing it as simply the brand medication coming from a pharmacy, people paying $1,000 a month, and next thing i know my mom can't get her diabetes medication so that's where the anger first started for me now as we progressed into the world of semi-glutide i'm seeing these compounds come out that are not coming from a pharmacy and they're not what would be given to a diabetic and that's where i'm like well if somebody wants to pay the money and they want to lose weight and they're doing other things to go along with it um and, and changing lifestyles and not just having a one and done shot Maybe. I don't know. But I'm I'm curious to see where this will end up, where this will go. I have seen it be very successful for some people, um, not for others. But, you know, like you said, are, are we dealing with another fen, fen? You know, I know personally, um, back when I was in my 20s and I was battling anorexia, I went through a problem with ripped fuel. I was taking about eight ripped fuel a day. And I actually ended up in the emergency room um, to the point where my doctor, my personal MD said he was going to sign me off as a patient because he was not going to sign my death certificate if I didn't change my habits. I don't know. I'm really curious to see where this is going to go um, as, as this unfolds. So I love the fact that you brought up anorexia, because if you look at anorexia and bulimia, they have these dysregulations of the way that we get our dopamine, our serotonin, our, our satiety mm -hmm. from food yep. and it really messes up people don't understand that when you're anorexic you actually change everything around and you actually feel better because you're not eating like it makes a mess right. of, of the neurochemistry and so 
last couple of weeks, it's really started pushing that they're using semaglutide. They're using terpazotide now to help with addictions. And alarms went off in mm -hmm. my head, like went off immediately. Because anytime you know you're messing with a bunch of cells in your head that, by the way, they just discovered which cells they were in November. So this isn't like we really know this stuff. It creates right. this this artificial potential for creating anxiety and, and dopamine pathways, which to me are very concerning. Um, and so the only reason why I'm concerned is not because I think that there's a problem with using it. It's more of what we don't know than what we do know, because it's been right. around for 20 years, but it's only been to the market now for three years. And so for right. me, that, that like throws up huge red flags when we know we're messing with neurochemistry, but we didn't even know what we were doing. So um, Zen, I was going to always ask you, you've been in this industry forever too. And eating and models have always had somewhat of a tie to having issues together. Um, when you see this kind of medication being used in teenagers, which you know, mm. as many times it's being used good, there's going to be somebody out there who thinks that they just need to get down for a dress size or to go to a dance. What do you think as a mother, as, as a model, as being in this forever, what do you think is going to happen to these kids if this becomes a pattern? It, this is very frightening because motherhood, number one, is by far the hardest job in the world. And watching addiction potentially unfold right before my eyes is very scary. And if prescribed appropriately, sure, could have a positive effect on metabolic health and, and weight management in certain individuals. And we're talking about maybe, you know, over 18 at this point. Right. But semi-glutide back to your conversation with Mackenzie is used for the treatment of type two diabetes in adults, right? But the long-term safety of using medications like semi semi-glutide in non-diabetic teenagers is just not well established. And I feel very, uh, I feel very defensive as a mom because it feels very counterintuitive and relying on medications without addressing underlying lifestyle factors doesn't necessarily lead to sustainable health improvements. In fact, we know it doesn't. And lifestyle modifications from a mom's perspective, like a healthy diet and regular exercise are so crucial. And the use of medication in non-diabetic individuals, especially young individuals, children, that their bodies are still developing, without a doubt, that's going to influence their perception of health and well-being, right? So we're going to lead them back into addiction. And it could potentially contribute without a doubt. Here we're going to go back to a culture of relying on pharmaceuticals like we did back in the 80s and 90s when we had the opioid crisis for weight management this time rather than mental health versus adopting healthy lifestyle choices. So I am not on board with this. I don't think that this is a kickstarter to anything other than the deep, dark rabbit hole of addiction and, and big pharma cashing in. So I'm not for this. You know, that's, addiction's the thing that always comes. So when I was like eight or nine, my mom told me I had really high hips. And I'm not kidding. From that day, I've always had this, this problem with my hips. I hate looking at my hips. It's funny how fast the negative reinforcement of body image comes around. So I'm hearing it give, being used for kids. And Mackenzie, you're a huge advocate of, of body, loving yourself, making sure that you take care of yourself, looking in the mirror and liking what you like because you've been down the road of this is completely safe. And then later on, it wasn't safe at all. When we look at completely safe and you, and you see that being completely safe, do you think that we're creating maybe a new type of body dysmorphia from all of this for these kids? Yeah, I, I definitely do. And I think, um, you know, the, the, the people that are, are not saying anything about this and they're on social media, um, you know, cause I see my son, he's, he's constantly on his phone and, and constantly with Instagram and, you know, I know most teens usually are. So when you, when you have people that are on social media and they're looking amazing and they're not being vocal about it, that's one issue. Um, and then but then when you have the other ones that they are honest about it, but they've made lifestyle changes of, you know, weight training and dietary changes. I mean, I think maybe that's a different conversation. But when it comes to this whole concept of, of teenagers taking this, that's disgusting to me. That, that's beyond disturbing. Um, between that and, you know, the whole, like we talked about with Adderall and, it's it's very scary how this this could potentially I I feel there's maybe a tiny bit less chance of this because you got to shoot yourself with this. A lot of people don't like needles, so I think it's it's definitely not as easy as popping a pill. They're actually releasing two pill forms. That's right. Yes, so, you're right. So we gotta, I did read we gotta, that. 
then we all know that there's danger in dopamine. Like we know that things that are dopamine chasing, you know, people that drink heavily, we, we create these pathways in our brain. We, it doesn't matter what you do. When you think about the dopamine chasing component of weight loss and what it does to people, what is your first thought process of what's going to happen for individuals who don't make lifestyle changes and what lifestyle changes would you recommend? I mean, you've done, you've been in this business forever. So. Well, let's address the fact that it, without a doubt, it becomes evident that semi-glutide is a double-edged sword. So we know this, yeah. right? So, so right. offering, offering remarkable, what I call remarkable short-term benefits, uh, but potentially carrying long-term risks. That's what, we're talking about right that that's the conversation mm -hmm. so the discussions are around rebound effects in my opinion and artificial substances altering brain functions and the ethical concerns of its increasing use in non-diabetic i keep saying that non-diabetic teenagers right. raises important questions about the trade-offs between immediate results and what i always advocate for which is sustainable health and i can't emphasize enough the need for a holistic approach to health considering not only the physical outcomes but also the psychological and long-term consequences of these medications i'm certain Certainly left with a nuanced, a very nuanced perspective after hearing both sides. And I would encourage every mother, every father, every, even, even teenagers out there considering this to, to really weigh the positives and the negatives before resorting to such disruptive. It's a disrupt, it's a it's a disruptive pharmaceutical intervention because it's not made for the masses and it's being taken right. as if it's being taken as if it is. And that's where I feel, you know, that in order, if you're going to use this, you're going to have to come up with, with a really, really strong schedule of not just your, 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 your eating habits, but to maintain your exercise and a regimen that you're going to be able to adhere to for the rest of your life. Because although they're mm -hmm. going to call this the magic pill, this is also you just sold yourself to the devil and and when you sold when you sell your soul sold to the devil you got to keep making the devil happy and that's how i consider these pills now if you need the pill and it's of medical necessity that's an entirely different conversation but that's not why kids are taking it so part of the reason why i always push with people whether you're taking semaglutide or not you want to make sure to look at what's causing the issue underlying so triquartra mm -hmm. help and I work together on a product called GLP Activate. And the reason why we did that is because you need capsaicin to help reduce the amount of inflammation that you mm -hmm. have in the stomach. The L cells produce this chemical and they're only found in the intestine. So if you have inflammation there, you're never going to get away from this stuff. And then if you add berberine as well as ECGC, which I can say if I say it quick, epigallocachecan, I can't say it slow. Those things help <laughs> feed the microbe that then you feed the gut lining. And so we get most of our energy from the gut lining. So for people who are considering it, or you're even on it, you do need to take care of everything naturally along with it. Even if you're taking it, if you're not taking care of the microbe with berberine and ECGC, or if you're not taking care of the chronic inflammation with things like aloe vera and, and your epigallocachecan, you're never going to be able to get away from this stuff at all. So you want to make sure you're taking care of all of it together. And that's that's the reason why you work with good companies like Triquercha that you can count on. And to your point, Phil, obviously diabetes is a different story, right? Because there's a genetic disposition, disposition to have reduced GLP. And considering the source of all active GLP, like you so eloquently put, is from the gastrointestinal system, uh, the supplements that support natural production, like the one that Triquercha has, it's a GLP activate product. It combines the ECGC, capsaicin, berberin, um, Aquinas cinnamon, and it fixes the problem. So I'm totally going to run out and get that for my husband because he is currently on Munjaro. And I think that this particular product could definitely supplement his overall health. Now, Mackenzie, you're mm -hmm. gorgeous. You've done this for years. When you talk to somebody about how you stay the way you want to look, you're positive. What is the first thing you tell people you need to work on before anything else? Your diet. And I don't even like to say the word diet. I I, I never, because I, I, I always say it's it's diet with a T. So I don't like to use the word diet. Um, it's it's healthy eating habits. You know, I, I've been a, a certified trainer for 20 years, and this has always been the number one thing. It's 80% nutrition, 20% exercise. And that's the biggest thing is making sure and I'm even dealing with this right now with my son, where I, you know, as a teenager, as a 17 year old boy talking to him about, 
eating healthy foods all throughout the day, not just one meal here, one meal there, because that's just going to slow the metabolism down anyhow. So it's really, to me, about eating and making healthy choices and having that every three hours if you can, even if it's just a little snack, grab some almonds, whatever, you know, whatever you can. Um, between that and then, yes, exercise. You know, to me, it's always, you know, once you get to a certain point that you, you do your cardio and your weight training, but when you get to a certain age, too much cardio becomes counterproductive. And this is why we see, some, you know, we see obese people in the in the gym on the treadmill for hours. Why is that? It's, it's way too much cardio for the body. So there's that fine balance of exercising, moving. Um, I'm, I'm more of a big advocate on, on having, having a Fitbit and getting my 10,000 steps in. Not necessarily going for a run, but getting to over, actually over 10,000 if I can, um, just to get, keep the body moving. And from there, it's it's just, you know, continuing through your life, making those healthy choices, getting good fiber. This is another thing I've been talking more about. Um, you know, like you, to your point, Phil, you know, the gut, you know, fiber is a big one. So making yeah. sure that you're getting uh, low glycemic vegetables, low glycemic fruits, um, the things that will not spike the blood sugar and will just keep the body revving and going because I see the body like a car. You want to you keep everything, you know, functioning properly throughout your entire day and then Water, I, for me personally, I drink a gallon of water a day, um, and I, I make sure that I get at least eight hours of sleep. That That's, you know, my phone will be shut off by 930 because I, I everybody knows that if I'm woken up, I am not a happy camper. So <laughs> sleep is a big one. <laughs> See, I love it. I love the fact that you're always talking about your kids. I know that that's what we all think of, and I think we give better advice to our kids than we give to ourselves. Do ourselves. ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I, Zen... When it comes around to all of this stuff, if you were going to give your kids just a piece of advice on looking beautiful, staying beautiful, and loving yourself, what would you say? Well, I always tell my daughter, you know, don't try to change who you are. Just love yourself. You, 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 you are perfect the way you are, and I don't allow her to compare herself to anybody or anything. I tell her she is her own unique footprint in this world, and there's not a single living soul that can ever replicate her. And she needs to just be proud of the vessel that she was given. Now, when it comes to advice for my older daughter, I always advocate for non-invasive procedures because we definitely don't want to start using fillers and Botox in our 20s. So carboxytherapy is often referred to as CO2 lift and it's carboxytherapy for the skin. It's a cosmetic procedure that involves the application of carbon dioxide gas via a gel-like mask application over 45 minutes. And it improves the skin's elasticity, it promotes collagen production, and addresses a lot of skin concerns from acne to puffiness to uh, discoloration and even hyperpigmentation. So I always will tell my stepdaughter Carly to, to opt for non-invasive treatments and start to prep her skin even in her early 20s to avoid having to do invasive procedures later on. See, I love all of this because I can, I'm concerned with a 66% rebound on every person. That's not 66% of the people. Everybody gains at least 66%, and they're thinking it'll be higher with these medications. And I think that I like people, and the last thing I want to see is I'm hurting themselves by dropping all this weight and thinking that's who we liked because I've never met somebody and thought, well, I'd sure like you better if you lost some weight. I've never thought that. <laughs> And I don't think any of the rest of us do. Thank you so much for this. This was fantastic. This is a conversation I want to have so people will talk amongst each other. Thank you so much for joining me, Phil. You are amazing as, a, as an incredible co-host and regular contributor. Mackenzie, thank you so much for your expertise. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is definitely a hot topic that you're right, Phil. More people need to speak about it. That was America's Favorite Pharmacist segment brought to you by Tricarture Health. That was the awesome pharmaceutical expert phil cowley you can check him out on the gram at phil's my pharmacist and that was the beautiful and incredible mackenzie westmore you can head directly to their website at westmorebeauty.com welcome to 2024 my dear friends we'll see you next week you're listening to a moment of zen right here on 710 wor the voice of new york iHeartRadio.